We've spent the last few sessions now examining the melodic scale and the circle of fifths. So what I want to do for this session is move on from that and examine the theory behind melodies in, in a little more detail. Now, before we start on this, uh, I've just got to say here that the theory of melody is actually, it's actually quite a complex one. Um, in fact, I think it's a little more complex than harmony in parts. So the best thing I think we can do here is uh, to make it that bit easier to digest. I'm going to break it down into smaller segments and, and what we'll do is we'll examine each in turn throughout the next few sessions and then after that what we'll do is combine all that theory back together again and, and hopefully come out with some killer melodies at the end of it. Or at least I hope we will anyway, uh, we'll have to see how this pans out. Now, as I mentioned in the previous session, the main premise of any melody is, is basically to secure the tonality of the music and, and that's just really a way of describing how it centers or it leans towards a specific note, uh, the, the key of your music. Now, if you recall the last DVD on harmony, that's something that shouldn't be that new a concept to you, really, because in that DVD, we specifically worked at, at building chord progressions that lean towards the home note of the scale, the tonic. And, and we did that by using a number of techniques, such as... Um, uh, the cadence where we move from the V to the I, that, that gave it that feeling of returning home again. And, and we also use strong progressions, or at least mostly strong progressions, strong to strong to strong. And, and that was basically to ensure that the harmony always leaned towards the key of the music. And basically what we need to do is we need to do the same with melody. We have to write our melodies in, in, in such a way that... It leaves little to no question as, as to what the key of our music is. And, and the best way that we can accomplish that is by using the tonic and the dominant notes of our scales. You see, with melody, you find that it, it, it's the relationship and the movement between your tonic and your dominant that, that makes them so powerful. And In fact, you'll find that every great melody in dance music and, well, in pop, actually, and, well, I mean, pretty much all music, really, is... They're written in such a way that the notes playfully jump between the tonic and the dominant notes of the scale. And and that's because it, those two notes signify the key of your music. And it, it's so strong that even if you start your melody on a different note than, than the tonic, provided you have interplay between that tonic and the dominance, then there's no question of, about you know what the key of your music is. So we can say there, really, that... that on a very fundamental level, melody is simple enough. Um, just like our chords were in the last DVD, uh, it's, it's the first and the fifth note of the scale that are important. And um, basically, we want to write a melody that works its way to this fifth note and, and playfully dances around it, I suppose, in, in a melodious way and then, then works its way back to the tonic again. But the thing is, as simple as that sounds, there's a lot more to writing a good melody than, than simply jumping around your keyboard and occasionally hitting a tonic here and a dominant over there because melody not only has to be memorable, it's the driving force of your music and, and you have to treat it as such. I know this is dance music and, and the groove reigns supreme over everything. It, it, it's what we dance to, it's why it's called dance music. But if we take away melody from dance music... It's not so interesting or identifiable anymore. For instance, imagine Electro without that buzzing lead jumping all over the place, or 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 the bass line without that throbbing bass pumping out that melody, or even Trance hands in the air, um, Euphoria Trance without saw leads, or a progressive house without those evolving textures as it moves along. If if you strip those melodies away from the music. Well, it loses its drive, its its focus, its destination. I mean, it's no longer memorable because there's nothing to remember it by. If, if you think back to all the tracks you like, it's it's going to be the melody that you remember. That that's the part that you're going to recall in your mind. Whether it was um, the drums playing a certain rhythm, or or the bass, or the the lead playing that that melodious rhythmic part, that's what you tend to remember. That melody there differentiates one track from another. I mean, it, all dance music, well, a fair amount of dance music has a 4-4 kick drum and a, a, a standard bass. So that's not going to make you remember that track in particular. It's going to be the melody. 
And also, you've got to think that without a melody, rather than the music being driven somewhere and moving towards that final destination, that, that, that explosion of emotion that, that sends shivers up the spine of your listeners, without that, your music's just going to meander along. So, yes, the groove is important. I, I'm not denying that. And, and the drums, the bass, they're very important for dance music. It's what we're going to dance to. But at the end of the day, it's the melody that drives your music and, and gives it gives it a purpose, gives it a destination and, and makes it memorable. So how do we do it? How do we make a, a, a melody that not only drives the music, but, but makes our music memorable? Well, personally, for me, it's an overused adage when, when speaking about mixing, but when you're writing melodies, I think it really is just like baking a cake. Um, what you have basically is you have a number of techniques or or ingredients that, that you throw together. And when you mix them together in just the right amount, you have a banging melody coming out the other end. And like a cake as well, if you, if you use too much of one and not enough of the other, you, you just end up with a horrible mess coming out the other end. So the first step to writing any melody for me is, is, is basically we're going to examine the techniques involved. And, and I can split these down in, into quite a few parts and and what i see them as is uh, energy balance rhythm repetition dynamics and drive now for this session what i want to do is i want to focus on the first of those techniques that i want to focus on energy now when i talk about energy um, it can often be confused with drive but the two are separate entities. Uh, drive drives the music forward. It it makes the music want to progress onto the next note. It onto the next bar. It, it it pushes the music forward. It makes you want to hear more. Now, energy on the other hand is is more related to the power of the music. Um, how it lifts the listener up. How it excites them. How it treats them. Uh, by controlling the energy in a melody, we can we can control the excitement that the state of arousal in our listeners now, the main element that creates energy in, in in melodies is pitch but it's how we move pitch how we change from one note to the next to the next that that basically is going to control the energy of the of, of the melody um to explain this a little bit i think what we'll do is, is, is we'll do some examples here and um for this session uh We'll, we'll write in uh, G minor. Uh, it's a popular scale in um, ele Electro uses it a lot and I find that bass lines use it an awful lot now and a bit of garage, they seem to like a bit of G minor. So we'll write in that. Um, now, unless you've got a phenomenal memory or, or this is the 60th time you've watched this DVD, you're not going to be able to recall the circle of fifth. So pause this DVD and... and don't restart it until you have the pamphlet that came with this, this DVD in your hand. Are you back already? Right, well, what we need to do first is, I said we're going to work in G, G, G minor. Is it G minor? Yeah, we'll work in G minor anyway, if I didn't say that before. I'm sorry. I'll... But um, basically, we've got to calculate the notes of G minor. What are they? Well, if you're looking at your pamphlet there, at, at, at your circle of fifths, you can see there that G minor runs counterclockwise from the A minor which means that it's going to have flats in it now it's also sat two away from the A minor so that's two flats now if you think of our saying from before father Christmas got dad an electric blanket well blanket and electric basically that gives us a B flat and E flat so the rest of the notes in, in G minor now the rest of our notes are going to be our musical alphabet of A to G now, because we're in the key of G, we start counting from G, so it's going to be G, A, B, but that B will be our B flat, so it's G, A, B flat, C, D, E is our next flat, so that'll be an E flat, and then that's F. Now, you've got to recall here that that's only provided us with the notes of the G natural minor. And we're writing melodies in minor here, so we need to use the melodic minor. Now, if you recall there, what that means is we augment the sixth and the seventh notes of that scale when we're working up the scale. And we only use natural notes when we're working down. So basically, we can say that, that when we're working up the scale, we'd, we'd actually be using uh, uh, G, 
A, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp. Uh, and I'll just call call G melodic up there now for you. Right, we can see the notes there, so let's get on uh, creating some melodic energy. Now, as I mentioned, the purpose of a melody is tonality, and, and, and that can be accomplished with the interplay between the tonic and the dominant, which in our case here is going to be, as you can see there, it'll be the G and the D. So what we'll do is we'll start by knocking in a G note here. Uh, I'm just using basically a, a, a very basic patch here. It's quite a plucky patch, just so you can get an idea of, of how things are going there. It's not the perfect timbre that we want, but it'll do for now. Now, in this example, though, I'm, I'm going to start on the tonic there. and It's not always necessary to start a melody on the tonic note. Uh, you can, if you want, start on any note, even a note higher than the dominant, if you want to. But provided the note we start the melody on is in the scale that, that we're currently working in, then it's fine. We just don't want to start a melody on an accidental note, since that would immediately throw our listeners for six. So... So basically what we want to do is we want to start our melody here in a note in the scale. And then from there we can either work up or we can work down to the dominant and the tonic. Uh, the only really thing you have to bear in mind with melodies is, is tonality, securing that home key of your music. So if you do decide to start on another key other than the, the tonic here, you have to ensure you use notes that will secure the tonality of the record. Now I've started on the tonic here as you can see, so... What I basically want to do is move up to our D note, the dominant, and and this is where we can begin to look at energy because basically we can move up to the D using steps, skips, or a mix of both. Now, all of these provide slightly different energy levels for our melody, so what we'll do is uh, we'll start simply, I think, and we'll look at steps first. Now, all steps are basically, is it, it just consists of moving up or down to the next note in the scale so in our example moving from say g to to a to, to b flat to c to d will be stepping so we'll, we'll knock those in we'll, we'll do a step up to our our dominant note here so i'll just do g a Oops, be a b flat and then we'll go to a C and up to our dominant there. And let's have a listen back to that. That already sounds like a record to me. Like Jet Set Willy. Anyway, yeah, admittedly, that doesn't sound too great. Um, there's no rhythm there. I've got Jet Set Willy running through my head now. Uh, there's no rhythm there, balanced dynamic effects processing, and it, it's not a great synth setting, but despite all that, what I want you to do is I want you to listen to the energy that's got. Just listen to, not not the timbre, but listen to the feel it's giving. Can you hear that? That's kind of like a, a flowing feeling to it. Um, the way it moves from one step to the next, it, it's a smooth, it's like a, it's a smooth, free-flowing, natural kind of grace to that. Yeah. You can hear the energy building as it increases, but it sounds flowing and, and natural as it does it. Now, with something like that there, I, I can guarantee that vocalists would, well, they'd love us, because singing in steps is incredibly easy, but... While that does sound natural and flowing, it also sounds um, it sounds a bit tepid, a bit boring. It, it, it It's like simply running up a scale and, well, essentially that's what we're doing there. Now what we can do is we can actually increase the energy of the melody by replacing steps with skips. Uh, now I don't really think I need to describe how this works. It's simply skipping notes, moving to another note in the scale that... that isn't sat directly before or after it. Um, for example, I mean, in our in our G, ma G minor here, um, we could start at G and then we could jump up to a B flat, basically skipping the A in our scale. Or alternatively, we can skip downwards, skipping a note and, and leaping from, I don't know, a B flat to a G. So what we'll do, we'll change all these now to, to skips. So I'll just... That 
and be an F sharp people going up. Uh, then we can skip back down to D. Um, I'll put another note in. I'll skip up to F sharp again. Um, I'll put another one in. We'll skip down to B flat and then I don't know. Just have a listen to this. I think the first thing we say there is that it's got more energy than than simply stepping. It, it doesn't sound as as uh, as as slow as as, as characterised. Um, it's more interesting if you listen to that. It, it's got more of a character. It, it's more exciting. It does seem a. It gives off more energy. And the thing is, though, that although skips are tending to sound better there than. It's sounding better than steps, it's sounding more exciting, but the thing is, if we only constructed melodies from skips, it becomes boring over a very short period of time, uh, and we'll end up bored with it quite quickly, you know, maybe if we have too much excitement, we get bored of it, so the best solution we can do for any melody is a mix of both, a, a, a mix of steps and a mix of skips. Now, from our two examples there, we can pretty much say that where we choose to use these steps and skips is going to determine how the melody comes across. Um, we could choose to start smoothly and, and, and build up energy to, to a certain point using steps where we could then introduce some skips to the music to, to give it its final jump, that sudden burst of excitement or energy. Um, what we'll, do, we'll try that here. Um, we'll give it a go. Now remember, I'm not going to play with rhythm yet because I don't want to cover rhythm. Um, I think from there we'll go to B flat. Uh, and then we'll jump up to a a D. Uh, do another D. Um, up to an F sharp. Down to a D. Uh, to a C, I suppose. Um, and go to an A. Right down to a G. So there we've got a mix of, of, of steps and skips as well. So let's see how that one sounds. Let's we've, we've got a larger skip. Now, I mean, as I said, you've got to accept there at the moment we've got no rhythm, dynamics, drive, <laughs> pretty much anything in that, really. But if you just listen to the energy, you can hear how we've controlled it. We start smoothly, and then all of a sudden, when we hit that F sharp, there we give it that. It has that sudden injection of energy, that sudden injection of character. You can hear we controlled it. I mean, we're starting smoothly, and then we get more character in, and then we suddenly smooth out. And we, when we reach the back end here, when we come down here, we slow it down. We're, we're relaxing a little. Now, whilst I'm talking about skipping, right? You are theoretically free to skip however many notes you want to in the scale. Um, but from a musical point of view, we need to be cautious how far we choose to skip. For example, when we move up in pitch, we're, we're arousing our listeners' interest. Um, we're building up, we're going somewhere. And then, as you heard there, when we move back down in pitch, we're relaxing. We, we remove some of the energy of the music back to its... It's natural original state. We come back down again. Now, if you decide to start on the tonic note of your scale for your melody, and you jump from the tonic to the leading tone, and then jump there back down to your dominant, it's not going to sound as exciting if you jump from the tonic to the dominant, and then onto the leading tone. Now, the reason for that is because 
the tonic and dominant relationship. Um, these two notes, as I've said before, they secure the key of the music. It's the tonality. They, they give your melody your tonality. So if you do like I've done here, basically, if you jump from our tonic there and we've gone above our dominant there, then we move down to our dominant. Um, basically, what you're doing is you're pulling the music down a bit. Um, you're giving a relaxing feel to the music and you're moving down. So generally, what we'd want to do in a position like this is uh, we could move that, for example, to there. And then we jump up to our, our dominant. So we're going tonic and we're working up to our dominant. We're not jumping beyond the dominant and then coming down to it. Let's have a listen to how that one sounds. Sounds a little bit better. I mean, we could always um, move that one there and take that one out. Move that one to there. So basically there, we now know how to control the energy of music. But as I mentioned at the beginning of this session, it's only the very start of the theory. And, and, and to create a memorable killer melody something that really bangs out we need to examine the other principles too so i think what we'll do in the next session is we'll move on from this riff now we know how to control energy we'll move on now and we'll look at how how to control balance in the music in our melody <laughs>